3,000 boys, let's go! All together now, boys. WOG! Welcome back to the Red Ones Go Faster. Old Big Mech here. And yes, that's WOG with a G. Every git knows that an orc from south of the galactic equator has an accent. Get over it! What's really important today is that 3,000 of you absolute war bosses and mech boys have decided to subscribe to the channel, which is awesome! Psst. Those of you watching that aren't subscribed yet, this is your reminder. Hit the button. Is free. That's right. This channel, The Red Ones Go Fasta, now has over 3,000 subscribers. Well, not the biggest Warhammer channel by any means. It is really, really fast growing. And I don't say that just as a joke because we're red. We really are. Uh, this channel had less than 100 subscribers uh, less than a year ago. So to have that kind of growth, especially in early days when it's hard to build... Uh, especially natural organic growth is a really cool thing. Plus, you all engage. It's not just 3,000 bot accounts. You stick around. The comment sections are always on point. Our Discord server is absolute fire. Again, completely free. If you haven't done our Discord thing yet, I don't know why you wouldn't. Get down there. We have things for everything, not just orcs. Anyways, uh, our Patreon is doing great. Like, it's super awesome to see the community that we're building here, and it really, really is. And, and I say that because this channel does focus on the positives of the hobby and is very much focused on the family part of it. Longtime viewers know I got four drops myself, and Kid Hammer is a huge part of this channel uh, and of our Discord. We talk about Kid Hammer stuff all the time, ways you can play it, how you can encourage your kids to get into the hobby with you and enjoy it and love it. Uh, and just kind of celebrate everything that they do so that, you know, we can get them hook, line, and sinker just like we are. So you can expect a week-long celebration of us hitting this milestone. And it is a milestone. There are a couple of key ones uh, in a YouTube channel. Uh, the first is getting at least 100 subscribers. And that's when you can actually change your name so that you're, you know, YouTube.com slash something instead of just a random string of alphanumerics. The second is 1,000 because that's where you are monetized. Google's going to play ads, whether you're monetized or not. The monetized just means that you at least get a piece of it instead of Grandpa Google getting all of it. And then 3,000 is important, not so much for YouTube, but for Games Workshop. You see, if you want to apply to be a part of their influencer program, whether it's YouTube or uh, Instagram or TikTok or whatever, you need to have at least 3,000 followers before they will even talk to you. Well, Big Mac knows this because he's actually applied more than once and has been told this straight from G-Dub. So now I get to resubmit my application and see if they won't send us some of this cool new work stuff so that we can talk about it. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this episode because, as we've been talking about for weeks, our army is finally here for 10th edition. We have gotten our new codex pre-ordered. Uh, we've got our battle force pre-ordered, uh, and we have our new combat patrol also pre-ordered. <laughs> Anyways, the important part is our turn in the great revolution that is 10th edition has finally come. We've got a codex. It's been put out for pre-order. People are ordering it. Funnily enough, a lot of local game stores actually already got it. And so there's a number of people that have it in their hands. There's been a number of leaks from it of people taking pictures of the pages and stuff. Because, again, they went to the store and they just bought it. Uh, so that's not, you know, their fault or anything. And so, yeah, we know the full contents of the Codex. Uh, people already have the Battle Force in their hands, which is awesome. It is a really cool Battle Force if I didn't already own everything in it. Uh, besides the new Big Mac, obviously. Uh, I would totally buy one. In fact, honestly, if I could find one at a discount, I'd probably buy one anyway. But that's just me. Uh, but anyways, what I really, really, really wanted to talk about was uh, the six new detachments in the Codex. Now, I am going to do a much deeper breakdown of all six of them, including what models you should buy for kind of like each, I don't want to say ideal, because there's more than one ideal way to do any detachment, but like six really strong, uh, you know, versions, right? So each detachment, you know, if you buy these kits... They're, they're pretty much always going to be good in this detachment, no matter what else you build off of them. You know, this is really where you should go to spend your teeth. 
uh, so that you get maximum synergy in between uh, you know, the models that you're buying and the detachment that you're choosing to play. Now, the reason why I'm not doing this right now, even though we already know the full contents of the codex, is one very specific point. And that point is that the points in the codex are already null and void. They will change. Games Workshop has told us this from the beginning. They've told us this specifically for this codex. They are not long for this world. Basically, we have the next balance data slate update. Uh, for those of you that are kind of new to Warhammer or don't quite follow, you know, competitive play kind of stuff, uh, every quarter, uh, four times a year, Games Workshop comes out with a balanced data slate. They go, hey, look, here's things in the uh, in the universe, in the game, uh, that aren't working so well. Either no one's taking them because they're too expensive, or everyone's taking them and they're overpowered, or, hey, we got some, uh, you know, wording messed up in it and it doesn't work how we intend things like that and so they update all of the points in the rules commentary uh in order to keep the game going the game is a living game all of the rules do change just like all the lore changes that's going to be a whole other video but anyways because of that whatever videos i make in between now and the 28th in two weeks are going to be completely bunk anyway, because we don't know what's going to happen to the points. And they can swing wildly. And it would really suck to make a video and go, hey, here's the kits you should buy, here's your 1,000 point army, and you watch it and you buy it, and before you even have a chance to build it, let alone paint it or play it, now it's a 1,200 point army or an 800 point army. Right? I mean, it doesn't even have to be that drastic, but you get my drift. So... After the balanced data slate, which we'll totally do a video just on that, like we always do, and we go over everything, not just orcs, uh, I will be putting together my six videos for the six different detachments. What I wanted to talk about today was just the in-generalness of which detachment you might be leaning toward. Now, why is that important, I hear you asking? Well, depending on where you are in the hobby, if you don't have you know, billion points of orcs already sitting around, uh, you are probably itching to get working on buying some things or thinking about which of these detachments you want to use your army for, because you can only pick one detachment in 10th edition. This isn't like the wild days of 7th or 8th or whatever it was when you could have a whole bunch of different detachments and they all like conjoin with each other to make an army. And yeah, that was just really, really weird. So nowadays in 10th edition, you only get one detachment and most people tend to kind of gravitate toward one of the ones in their codex and pick it and kind of stick to it. Now, by no means does that need to be what you do. In fact, of all of the codices so far, uh, I think orcs have like the most balanced detachments. I don't think there's a bad one among them. Now, there's definitely other codices that have a stronger singular detachment, um, but they also have, you know, a, a clearly weaker one. There are definitely detachments that people just don't use at all. They're just not competitive, not fun, not anything. I think that these six detachments we got are both fun, like they truly look like cool ways to do your army and thematic. Like they fit with the lore. They fit with like the essence of orcdom and competitive. And that's a really, really rare opportunity. So because of that, I, I don't think there's a bad one. If you've got a bunch of orcs, just keep buying a bunch more orcs. You're going to be fine. You can switch your detachments up. They're going to be great. But this is for you new guys out there. You know, uh, you're, you're just getting your teeth cut on being a boy being a war boss, you're, you've got you know maybe a combat patrol or a couple of boxes or something, and you're really curious, what are these detachments? What do they mean? And what do you buy next? And these are like the most common comments we've gotten on the videos and the most common threads we have on Discord um, and even a little bit on the Patreon. You know, people that are even more invested into orcs than, than normal are going, hey, which one of these should I do? So again, brief overview, but let's get into it. All right, first of all, our index one is staying, but it's getting a little tweak and a name change. So instead of being called Wa Tribe, uh, it's War Horde, but it's basically the same detachment. There's a couple little tweaks to it, but it's the same. And honestly, our index detachment has been fine. All of the videos I've done on building your orc army since 10th edition dropped last year 
to this point have been using that index and they've been great. They've been competitive. They've been fun to play. They've been thematic. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with the generalized WOG tribe. There really is. It, it's a good detachment. So if you can't decide <laughs> between some of these other ones, you're just fine sitting on the index style one, collecting kind of everything and anything. Uh, you're going to be able to use it. It's going to be fine. The next one is called the big hunt. Now the big hunt, as you could probably guess, is all about beast nagas. So if you got the battle force from the holidays or you're getting the new combat patrol that's all beast naga, this is definitely going to call to you. Now, it's not only beast naga, but a lot of these detachments, the detachment special rule and the enhancements that are unlocked with it only affect certain units. Uh, so none of these, by any means, mean that you can't play anything. Uh, if you want to do the big hunt and take a Stampa, you can. If you want to play uh, Cult of Speed and take a Stampa, you can, right? It, it doesn't matter. What matters is that synergy, right? So if you're going to take a detachment that's all about Beast Nagas, whose enhancements only work on Beast Nagas, you're going to want to collect mostly Beast Naga stuff to go with it. So anyways, that's the big hunt. Uh, detachment number three is Cult of Speed. All right? The red ones. We go faster. <laughs> uh, this one's all about your buggies, right? It, your war bikes, your all your new, the new style buggies that have come out. You know, the Death Killer War Trike and, and uh, uh, Rucka Truck Squig Buggy. Well, yeah, actually, I think that one's a, a speed freak now, too, uh, and whatnot. And so it's all about going fast. Now, there's a little bit of a misnomer with the Cult of Speed. People tend to think that, uh, equate in Warhammer, that going fast equals close combat. And for most armies, that's true. If you do a go fast Space Marine army, for example, uh, it's all about close combat. If you do a go fast Dark Eldar army, it's all about close combat. Orcs have kind of traditionally actually been a little weird. They've been about speed, but it's all always kind of been about drive-by DACA, which is you're going to get there fast, and you're actually going to shoot at a bunch of things, uh, not necessarily charge in. Um, and they're kind of doubling down on that with the Cult of Speed. So it's going to be really, really good for going fast, getting to objectives first, and really laying down some firepower. This is actually a sneaker uh, orc shooting uh, detachment. One of the things that's really big with it, and again, we're going to get into this in the dedicated video for Cult of Speed, is the planes. Uh, your DACA jets and your Wazbomb blast jets and whatnot, they are now Cult of Speed for the first time. And that is going to be huge because having the enhancements that this detachment brings on flyers is going to be a big deal. So if you're into anything that goes fast, if you got a bunch of buggies and bikes and planes, Cult of Speed is where you're at. Now, the yin to the Cult of Speed's yang is definitely Dread Mob. Dread Mob is all about walkers your dreadnoughts your killicans gorkonauts morkonaut stompas if it's big and it's clanky and there's mechs involved dread mob is where it's at now dread mob is definitely a daca focused shooting uh detachment so if you're into having more daca if you like flash gets and ludas and things like that dread mob is going to be really good it's also sneakily a 100% Gretchen possible army. Uh, Dread Mob has the very unusual distinction of being the odd detachment that allows you to kind of skirt the rules a little bit with a unit, and that unit is Gretchen. In all of the other detachments, you can only take three units of Gretchen because they do not have battle line. In Dread Mob, they do. So you could take six units of Gretchen in Dread Mob, and then obviously take your Killicans and your Grot Tanks and your Grot Mega Tank uh, and things of that nature and pretty much build yourself an entire legal Grot army. And we know, as much as we love Du Bois, every Orc player has a soft spot for a well done all Grot army. They're just so good. So Dread Mob kind of is this two for one uh, detachment. So if you're into, you know, Grot Guard or making a revolutionary army or Dread Gob or whatever, Dread Mob is going to be really good for you. And also, if you like DACA, if you like walkers, things like that, Dread Mob is definitely where you're going to be looking toward. All right, the fifth detachment, and the one I think I'm probably most excited about returning, is Green Tide. Green Tide is all about boys. Bog standard 
regular old orc boys. And it's all about getting as many of them as you can on the board and just mucking everything up. And they even come back to life, which is awesome. Now, I do miss the heady old days of 3rd and 4th edition where you had things like uh, the leadership being, is there more orcs than you can count? Ergo, you're fine. That was just so thematic and so good. But I also understand it, it's a bit kind of unstoppable uh, in the game today. Uh, or things like Mob Up, where if you know your squad of boys got kind of decimated a little bit and there was a bigger squad behind them, they would just kind of run to them and then kind of reform and join and be like, all right, we're all just one big squad now. You kind of can't do that kind of stuff anymore, and, and, and that's sad. But Green Tide does bring back a lot of that flavor. Again, with the having huge squads of boys, having a bunch of enhancements that work with having 10 boys or more still in your squad. Uh, and again, the ability to bring boys back to life after death. Re, uh, replenish your numbers with random orcs that just appear out of nowhere because they heard there was a wog and they came running as fast as they could. It's just so good. So if you're all about massed infantry, if you want to absolutely paint the board green with orcs, Green Tide is where it's at. All right, the sixth and final detachment in the Codex is Bully Boys. Now, Bully Boys is a new concept uh, and it's really, really deeply cool. Again, we've kind of always been able, again, there's been some exceptions in certain editions and codexes, but we've pretty much always been able to make a green tide. We've pretty much always been able to do some sort of a dread mob. Uh, we've pretty much always been able to do some sort of a cult of speed, speed buggy thing. And obviously you've always kind of had, you know, your standard balance detachment, right? Um, you know, the big hunt is going to be new with the big snag, with the beast snagas, but bully boys is very new. Now, what makes this detachment so interesting is that it wasn't too terribly long ago that orc armies could only have one war boss in them. Whether it was a generic war boss or named war boss, it didn't matter. You could only have one because otherwise they'd butt heads. So to, to have this idea of a detachment that's all knobs and bosses and, you know, your biggest, meanest orcs and that they get a whole extra log so that they can show the other boys what it's all about is really pretty cool. So if you're into the elite stuff, if you like having mega knobs and regular knobs and war bosses out the wazoo and punching things right in the face, the Bully Boys is a really cool idea of a detachment. So yeah, six brand new detachments, all of them interesting for different reasons. I don't think any of them are going to be bad. I think you're gonna have a competitive list no matter what you pick. So super excited for that. And again, once we get the new points updates in a couple of weeks, I will start in on that road of what army to build, what to buy, how to make that for the least amount of teeth possible. All right. So when... what is this I hear about a girl army? Uh, get back to work, you! Wagon! Yeah. <laughs>